Welcome back, Casual Gardeners. The title is clickbait, but it's also 100% true. I'm going to tell you about the poisons that are in your garden, and not just in your garden. I'm concentrating on things that we eat from our gardens that are poisonous. Now, this video is inspired by a friend who volunteers in a Facebook group that is in the business of identifying poisonous things. So if your dog or your child eats something and you're like, oh my gosh, are they going to die? This is a Facebook group that you can go to and they can help identify whatever it is that your loved being has had in their mouth and tell you just how freaked out you ought to be. Right, freak it out, freak it out. I am going to link to that Facebook group down in the description of the video. They may sound like the flamboyant opening act for a fish concert, but stone fruits should be taken seriously. Leaves, the seeds, and the branches of stone fruit trees are all poisonous, with the exception of almonds. And they're just not poisonous because we've bred the poison out of them. So that includes apples and cherries and peaches and plums, apricots, and also, as I said earlier, almonds. So the almonds that are still poisonous are called bitter almonds. And um, I think colloquially, the ones you can buy at the grocery store are called sweet almonds. I didn't know that. I always just called them almonds. As I was editing this video, I realized that it lacked a human touch. So here are some stories from out in the internet so you know they're true. I've included links to my sources in the description. Matthew Krem from Lancashire, hey UK viewers, this one's for you, said curiosity got the better of him when he decided to crack three of the seeds. However, he soon started to feel ill. Ah, I left off the point where it said that it was um, cherry seeds. He was admitted to a hospital after a 111 operator told him three pips could be fatal, but has since fully recovered. The Food Standards Agency, FSA, said some products made from stone fruits were regulated for safety. Mr. Krem called for warnings to be put on fruit packets, saying, if something was that severe, you'd think it'd be on the packaging. An FSA spokeswoman said, some non-edible parts of fruits, such as cherry seeds, contain cyanide and are not intended to be consumed. Some edible products, such as alcoholic beverages made from stone fruits and canned stone fruits, can also contain a low level of cyanide. However, this is regulated to ensure these products are safe for consumption. So the poison of the fruits of the stone fruit family is called amygdalin. And it is a molecule that when it breaks down in our bodies after we ingest it, releases deadly cyanide. If you grow any of the stone fruits in your garden, you are growing a poisonous plant. I intend to grow several stone fruits because poison or not, they are delicious. Now, if you do accidentally swallow a seed or two from stone fruits, you are still probably going to be okay. The fruits of the stone fruits are intended as a bribe to pay us for transporting their seeds around and pooping them out. And they don't want to punish us for that. As long as you don't chew on the seeds, you are going to be okay. What that means, though, is that if you have a pet that likes to, say, I've known some dogs that really like to eat plums, make sure that you are removing the seeds from the plums before you give them to your dogs because plum seeds are a hazard to your dogs if they chew them up. All right, next on what can only be described as a, a list video is beans. Beans are pretty toxic, actually. A type of lectin in red kidney beans was behind an outbreak in Denmark in 2020. Poisoning left 45 people sick, including 24 on one day in late April. It was limited to a catering company that delivered food for another business in the Copenhagen area. Nikolaus Konkove, head of crises management at the Danish Veterinarian and Food Administration, said it appeared the kidney beans were not boiled long enough. We dug into the product and it was labeled as pre-cooked kidney beans. We took samples of the kidney bean salad and based on symptoms the patients had, it looked like it was some kind of poisoning. We directed our investigations to what kind of meals they had that week, and we did interviews with all patients asking them what they had eaten on what dates, and in that investigation, the kidney bean salad was significant. Symptoms of poisoning include vomiting and diarrhea within a few hours of eating beans that have not been cooked for long enough to reduce this lectin and last for a few hours. 
only a few beans are needed to cause poisoning. So the toxin in question when it comes to beans is called phytohemagglutinin, which is fun to say. Say it with me, phytohemagglutinin. Ooh, good job. Oh, wow, it's really snowing. Mmm. If you cook your beans appropriately, you will neutralize that poison and they're safe and not just safe, but also nutritious to eat. But if you eat even a handful, like just as few as four raw kidney beans, you can wind up in the hospital. So make sure you're cooking your beans. Also be aware that if you're cooking beans in a slow cooker, it might not reach the temperature that is necessary to neutralize all of that poison. In fact, a large fraction of the food poisonings that are reported may actually be people eating beans that have not had enough of their toxin cooked out of them. Now, I already did a short about how potatoes are poisonous, but we're going to revisit them here because this whole video is about poisonous plants, and there they are. Uh, so potatoes contain a chemical called solanine, or solanin, which is yeah, present in every green part of the plant and the berries. On Sunday, Maria Harless said she was getting over a cold when she got a craving for comfort food. I was just craving warm mashed potatoes, so I made them for myself, she told Fox 31. Same way you'd have like a bowl of cereal. I just had to have a bowl of mashed potatoes. Harless said she went to bed with a full belly, but soon woke up in agony. Just woke up in the middle of the night with a pounding headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, she said. Her symptoms were so bad, she ended up going to the emergency room the next day. I just couldn't think of what it was except for maybe something I ate, and that's when I started to backtrack. What did I eat today? And then that little voice in my head heard my friend say, Don't eat potatoes if they're turning green, Harless said. She says the emergency room staff called poison control for possible solanine poisoning. Apparently, if potatoes are green or they have too many eyes on them, if you have enough of it, you can get sick from solanine poisoning, Harless said. According to Rocky Mountain Poison Control, solanine po forms when potatoes are stored in a place with direct sunlight. The root vegetable begins the process of photosynthesis and begins to turn green. That's when solanine is produced. As a dude, people hallucinate. They become de delirious. They go into comas, Dr. Chris Hoyt, medical director for RMPC, said. People have vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea. Hoyt says solanine poisoning can be serious, but cases are rarely fatal. Tomatoes also contain solanin in all the green parts, and that includes green tomatoes. But it's at much lower concentrations. You'd have to really pig out on your fried green tomatoes to be in any kind of danger. And then also, solanin can be neutralized by the temperatures that are obtained with frying. If you're boiling potatoes and you boil a green potato, the solanin is still going to be there. If you're worried about dogs eating potatoes, it's perfectly safe for a dog to eat unseasoned cooked potatoes. All right, next up is rhubarb. Rhubarb contains high concentrations of oxalic acid in every part of the plant except for the stems. So that's why we eat the stems of the rhubarb and not the leaves. Probably there's a big fraction of you out there who are like, I don't eat any part of the rhubarb. That tastes nasty. You're kind of right, that's why we have to add all that sugar, but I do like a strawberry rhubarb pie. Stories of rhubarb poisoning are harder to find, but here's one from Estonia in 2015. A previously healthy 47-year-old female prepared and drank a smoothie of pear, cucumber, and fresh rhubarb leaves. Now, if she hadn't taken the seeds out of that pear, maybe she was having another issue as well. Two hours later, she felt thickness of mouth and had difficulty swallowing. Six hours later, diarrhea developed, and the following day she complained of stomach pain and severe nausea. On day three, she contacted the Estonian Poisons Information Center and was recommended to present to hospital. She presented at the Emergency Medicine Department of the North Estonia Medical Center at day four. On admission, the main complaints were nausea, dry mouth, diarrhea, weakness, and mild epigastrium pain. Liver enzymes were strongly elevated, renal markers were normal, tests for hepatitis and autoimmune diseases were negative. She was initially admitted to the nephrology department for expected kidney damage, but was transferred to gastroenterology on the next day. Her condition started to improve day 8, and she was discharged from hospital day 11. 
In terms of edible plants with oxalic acid, I actually do have another one here in my garden right now, and that would be common wood sorrel. Foragers are going to tell you that common wood sorrel is edible, and they are right. The tangy flavor comes from the oxalic acid in its leaves. If you eat a lot of wood sorrel, you're going to have the same problems as if you eat the leaves of rhubarb. Excess oxalic acid can, can cause stomach irritation, kidney problems, and rarely death. In every gardening group, there's always one shrieking person who says, don't plant lilies in your garden because you will kill all the cats and dogs in your neighborhood. I was surprised to learn how toxic lilies really are for dogs and cats. It seems like even a little bit of lily can cause deadly anemia in your dog or cat. That's not one we eat though, not typically, so I'm not, that doesn't count. I want to talk about garlic and onions. That's why I'm sitting in front of this garlic right here. Garlic and onions are actually quite toxic as well to dogs and cats. They're in the same family. The poison present in garlic and onions is called N-propyl disulfide, and it's, it's pretty brutal. So make sure that you never, ever, 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 ever feed garlic or onions to your dog or cat, but you enjoy the heck out of them because humans and human ancestors all manufacture a enzyme that allows us to break that chemical down safely in our bodies. So the only problem that we might have with garlic or onions is too darn much delicious flavor. The way we compare the relative toxicity of poisons is using a scale called the LD50. It's usually determined using non-human animals because we're not allowed to do human experiments that measure death rates, typically rats. The LD50 is defined as the dose of the poison that will kill 50% of the test subjects. And I've gone ahead and looked up the LD50s for the poisons that we were talking about in this video. I wasn't able to find any LD50 data for N-propyl disulfide because it's not toxic to humans, just dogs and cats, and apparently nobody cares about them. So if you know that data, go ahead and slap that down in the comments so we can compare, because comparing poisons is fun. Even though just a few kidney beans can land you in the hospital, phytohemagglutinin has the highest LD50 of all of these poisons. A higher LD50 means that you have to ingest more of it to die. So it is actually the least toxic of these poisons. And you have to consume more than 2,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of phytohemagglutinin for half of the test subjects to die. The next least poisonous substance in this video is amygdalin. So that's from the stone fruits. You need to ingest 880 milligrams per kilogram of amygdalin for half of the test subjects to die. Solanine at an LD50 of 590 milligrams per kilogram is the third least toxic poison in this video. Now, because I'm introducing it now in this stylish casual gardening mug, this is the second most toxic poison in the garden, and it is caffeine. Caffeine has an LD50 between 150 milligrams per kilogram and 200 milligrams per kilogram. It means you have to drink quite a few cups of coffee to be in any danger of a deadly overdose. But it is a deadly poison, and it's deadlier than some of these other poisons that I've talked about that have landed people in the hospital. Also, it's delicious. Hmm, something about this casual gardening mug just adds that extra little bit of deliciousness to my caffeine. I was surprised to learn that oxalic acid has the lowest LD50 in the garden and is thus the most toxic poison that I talked about in this video. Just 24 milligrams per kilogram of oxalic acid is enough to kill 50% of test subjects. You may be wondering, what is the deal with all of the poison in our gardens? Why are so many plants trying to kill us? Well, they're not. No, none of the plants really care about trying to kill us or are aware of us in any way. But there has been an arms race going since really the first animal. Animals need to eat plants, and plants don't want to be eaten. Every plant on Earth has some sort of poison in their tissue 
that is there to dissuade animals from eating them. Because of this arms race, most of the poisons in plants aren't poisons anymore, or are only poisonous to specific groups of animals. So we don't worry about most of them. Mostly, they're safe. But if somebody tries to tell you that plants are safe to eat because they're natural, now you know that you should direct them to this video because four out of five of the types of garden crops that I talked about are directly poisonous to humans. And the fifth one, well, we all love dogs and cats. I do hope my little rant about poisonous plants in our gardens that we eat has been entertaining, if not informative. If you have a favorite plant poison that I did not mention in this video, of course, please slap that down in the comments because we like to learn things and I like to interact with you guys in my comments. Do it now. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video if you liked this video, and thank you for joining me here in my garden today and yesterday. I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.